the Fibonacci sequence and the golden ratio. Fibonacci, also known as Leonardo of Pisa, was an Italian mathematician born in roughly 1175. One day he was thinking about what would happen to the population of breeding rabbits. He came up with some rules to follow. So a pair of rabbits are put in a field. At the age of one month, the rabbits mate and so produce offspring at the end of the second month. So as the second month is beginning, we've still got our original pair of rabbits there. But as we go into the third month, we've still got our original rabbits and they've produced one pair of offspring. So we've now got two pairs. Now in Fibonacci's idea, the rabbits live forever and each mating pair produces one new pair each from their second month on. So as we go into the next month, our original pair produce another pair of rabbits, but the second pair aren't old enough yet, so we've got a total of three pairs. As we go into the next month, our original pair produce yet another pair of new rabbits, but now our second pair is old enough to produce their own offspring, so we've got a total of five pairs. As we go into the sixth month, our original pair of rabbits have produced another pair of offspring. Our second pair have also produced another pair. And our third pair have also reached the age where they can produce a new pair. And so we've got eight pairs of rabbits. Now Fibonacci kept thinking along these lines. And as he counted the pairs of rabbits, these are the numbers he got. Now if you look very closely at this sequence, you can see how it is made up. Each term is the sum of the two previous terms. So for example, one add one gives us an answer of two. One add two gives an answer of three. Two add three equals five, and so on. Mathematically, we can state it like this. F zero equals F one equals one. They're the first two numbers in the sequence. And from then on, Fn equals the sum of fn minus 2 and fn minus 1. This is the Fibonacci sequence. So what's so special about the Fibonacci numbers? Well, they're found all throughout nature. Most flowers, if you count the petals on them, that number will be in the Fibonacci sequence. So for example, in our pictures here, we've got one flower with five petals and a flower with three petals. If you think of three leaf clovers, four leaf clovers are very rare because four isn't a Fibonacci number. Also, if you were to go up through a tree and cut it parallel to the ground at any particular point, generally the number of branches you've cut through at that point will be a Fibonacci number. Now, another interesting thing about the Fibonacci numbers is what happens if you were to go through the sequence dividing each term by the previous term. So let's start at the beginning. The first term is 1 and the second term is 1. 1 divided by 1 gives us an answer of 1. Now the third term divided by the second term gives us an answer of 2. The fourth term divided by the third term gives us 1.5. Now if we keep on working through the sequence like that, have a look at what happens to the numbers. Have you spotted it yet? answers are getting closer and closer together. Until when we reach 89 divided by 55, to three decimal places, our answer is the same as the previous one. If we were to keep on going through the Fibonacci sequence, dividing each term by the previous term, you, we would find that our answer tends towards this number here. And we call this number the golden ratio. Now this is an irrational number, it goes on forever, but it's actually a very important mathematical number. One use for the golden ratio is in art. Here's the Mona Lisa, very famous picture by Leonardo da Vinci. Now on the picture you can see there are a load of rectangles drawn. 
Now if we were to look at those rectangles spaced in particular places on the face, each of those rectangles has sides in the ratio 1 to 1.618, the golden ratio. Now Leonardo da Vinci loved the golden ratio, and if you look at his other pictures, so for example here's the Last Supper, you would be able to find rectangles with sides of the ratio 1 to the golden ratio all through his work. He believed that this golden ratio created a fantastic form to look at in art. And it's not just used in art. The golden ratio is also used in architecture. Here we have pictures of the Dome of the Rock in Jerusalem and the Parthenon in Athens. If you were to look at these two buildings, you will find the golden ratio all over it. So for example, on the left, the Dome of the Rock, we've drawn it surrounded by a rectangle with sides in the ratio of one to the golden ratio. And again, it creates a beautiful form. Thank you for watching my video. This was just a quick introduction to Fibonacci numbers and the golden ratio, but I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe to see more Doing Maths videos.